Hey everyone, it's Sarah and today I am here with another perfume video and I am super super excited about this one. Um, I have beside me here one, two, three, four, five samples of brand new perfumes that have just released uh, just in the recent past, like within, definitely in within this year, but definitely within just the past few months. So um, I was able to get all of these samples from Mercari in a lovely bundle from a lovely person who had a whole bunch of them. Um, I actually got three, four, five, six, seven, eight samples and I think I paid twelve dollars for them so I was really really excited to get them um, I need to start doing this more because I really need to start buying decants and samples first before I spring for full bottles of fragrance so um, I'm really excited to talk about these perfumes for you and give you kind of short little reviews on them I have worn every single one of these on my skin I have tested them for full days at a time so I can definitely tell you kind of how they wear how they perform what the longevity is like um, as well as we're going to talk about the notes and different things in them if you like like these kinds of videos and want to see more um, please let me know in the comment section below this is the first time I'm doing a video like this so if you do like it I would love for you to let me know and I will continue to pick up uh, brand new release perfumes and review them for you. So with that being said, let's jump right in. The first one that I have for you is Gucci and this is the Memoir Dune Odeur. So um, this is a beautiful, beautiful perfume bottle. I absolutely love the green um, with the gold stars. It's just really, really gorgeous. Um, the bottle is so beautiful. It looks very, very vintage. Um, just really, really beautiful bottle. So the thing about this perfume is it's supposed to be and is being marketed as a totally unisex perfume. It is universal. It's a, like a universal fragrance that anybody can wear, um, a man or a woman. It's very, um, fluid and which I love. I think that's really, really cool. I think that's an awesome concept. Um, okay, so the notes on this one are Roman chamomile, Indian coral jasmine petals, musks, sandalwood, cedarwood, and vanilla. Now, this one, this is not a bad fragrance. This is just, it's so light that I can almost not smell it. I'm just going to spray it on the card here. Yeah, this is so, um, it's such a light fragrance that I almost can't smell it, and my skin just ate it up. Uh, it lasted maybe an hour on my skin. Um, I, I do get a lot of the Roman Chamomile. I actually have Roman Chamomile essential oil, pure essential oil that I've had for years. So, and this smells a lot like it, but you can definitely smell like the the sandalwood and the vanilla in the base um, that really kind of overpower the chamomile. So the chamomile lasts for really just in the opening and then it just kind of dies away on my skin. Um, this is a beautiful fragrance. It's not bad. Darn it, it does not want to stay in the card. Okay. Yeah, this is not a bad fragrance um, by any means, but it's definitely not a memorable fragrance to me. This isn't anything that I would, does not want to stay in the card. This isn't anything that I would want to purchase a full bottle of, especially for the price. Um, I just think the longevity of this one is pretty poor. Um, it definitely doesn't project at all either. I think maybe if you like went in to hug somebody, they would be able to smell it. But other than that, I don't think anybody is going to smell this on you. Um, it's nice. It's very benign. It's very, um, this would be very office friendly. I think that it would be very appropriate for any occasion, any time of day. Um, definitely inoffensive. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. So if, if you're, if you're somebody who likes fragrances like that, who really just likes, um, 
fragrances that wear very close to the skin, that are not going to project a whole lot, that are not going to be, um, you know, kind of in anybody's face. You're Fragrance is definitely not going to precede you into the room. Um, if you are that type of fragrance wearer, I do think that you would really like this. It is very classy smelling. It's very, um, it is very es expensive smelling. I almost said expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive smelling, um, but it's just, there's not a lot to it. It's, um, it's very forgettable. So anyways, I hope that that was helpful for you. That was definitely not one of my favorites. Okay, moving right along, we are going to talk about Idol 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 by Lancome. Now, I will tell you, these next two I did not have high hopes for because um, these are, even though I love pretty much anything Lancome does, I love Lancome perfumes. I should have known I was going to love this one too. Um, but usually when I see a new perfume released, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it's going to smell generic. Like the, you know, when you walk into a department store and you just get that generic perfume smell in the kind of cosmetic section, to me, that's what designer fragrances, like very new release designer fragrances smell to me. That's why I'm always looking for older perfumes, um, vintage perfumes, because I'm looking for something that smells different. So I was very pleasantly surprised when I tested this perfume out. This is a stunner. Um, this is gorgeous. This wore beautifully on me. And the thing about Lancome perfumes is you really are getting what you pay for. Um, they're beautiful smelling. They last forever. The longevity is wonderful. People usually respond well to them and like them. Um, for being strong fragrances, they're still what I would consider inoffensive. So, okay, Idol is described as being a modern musky Shepra floral fragrance. It is, um, there's something, there are a couple really cool things about this perfume. So, they use a sustainably sourced Esparta rose. Um, I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure it's just a special type of rose, but um, a Sparta rose petal essence from Turkey that is made exclusively for Lancome, which I think is really cool. Um, that just shows that they are definitely trying to keep their fragrances unique, um, which I think is awesome. Uh, Centifolia rose, bergamot, paracords, Indian jasmine, grandiflorum, and an all-new um, clean and glow accord. So again, something that Lancome uses exclusively for um, their own perfumes, which, or just this one, I'm guessing, because it's new. But I think that's cool, a clean and glow accord. So um, obviously it is something synthetic, but it smells amazing. Nonetheless, I love this. This is the scent of a woman. This smells very feminine, very bold and, and sexy and powerful and a little bit floral but a little bit sweet. It's just gorgeous and I would totally classify this as a modern Shebra fragrance for sure. This is it, th this is the kind of fragrance that in 20 years our daughters are going to think smells, um, you know, vintage-y to them, but in the best way possible, if that makes any sense. This is going to be a classic fragrance. It's just like all of their fragrances still to this day, fragrances that they made. Hey, baby. <laughs> Fragrances that they made back in the 90s are just still so beautiful and people still wear them as signature fragrances and I think that this is how this one's going to be. Um, just like La Vie Belle, I think this is going to be a huge hit. So, little ones here. You gonna say hey? But, um, I, but I don't have clothes on. Well, just stick your face in front of the camera and say hey. Oh, oh it's okay, baby. Can't stick my face in the camera. It's okay. But that's okay. Hello. Hello. Okay. Ooh, stinker, but so anyways, I do believe that this is gonna just be a huge hit like La Vie Bell was. Um I think that this might be just a little bit more unique than La Vie Bell. 
Don't touch the camera, sweetheart. But nonetheless, still really beautiful. I think it's going to be a huge hit amongst a lot of people. Um, I think a lot of people will love this and wear this. And yeah, this is definitely, definitely full bottle worthy for me. I absolutely adore this one. Which was a surprise to me because I didn't think I was going to fall so hard for it. But I definitely did. Okay, same thing with this next one. This next one I love so much and I thought for sure I was not going to like this. This is Libre or Libra. I'm not, I'm thinking it's Libra because I've never, I don't remember there being like A type sounds in French, but um, there, there may totally be, but I just don't remember like really harsh, like sounds like that. So I'm thinking this is probably Libra. But um, anyways, nonetheless, Libra by Yves Saint Laurent. Oh my goodness, this is another one that again, I did not think that I was going to like and I absolutely adore this fragrance. This is another one that is a beast. You can spray this on in the morning and 10 hours later, you are still gonna smell this. It's gorgeous. This is one that you could put on in the evening and you're still going to smell it on your skin in the morning. And I just think that that is awesome for a new fragrance because most fragrances that are coming out these days are watered down. They're disappointing. They are, they don't last long on the skin and which is why I got very uh, frustrated with newer designer fragrances because to me they just are, for the money, they're just not lasting at all. This, on the other hand, is is just beautiful. It's got fantastic performance, really good longevity, some really beautiful um, projectivity. It's just gorgeous. So, the notes on this one are mandarin, orange, lavender, black currant, pettigrain, jasmine, orange blossom, uh, Madagascar vanilla, cedar, ambergris, and musk. And this is gorgeous. This one smells much more unisex to me. Uh, than any of the other ones I'm going to talk about. This is, a, I think a man could easily, easily wear this. This reminds me very much of polo sport um, for men that every dude that I went to high school with wore in high school in the 90s. So definitely, definitely men could wear this. I love this. It's it pulls a little bit more masculine on me, um, but it's perfectly unisex, and this is one that even though it pulls a little bit more masculine on me, I am totally comfortable wearing, and it is so, so beautiful on my skin. Um, again, wonderful projection and performance out of this one, and another one that I really did not think that I was going to enjoy, but I absolutely love, and I'm gonna end up picking up a full bottle of this. Um, I may start with minis of these because I need to quit buying so many full bottles of like everything, but um, yeah, I definitely, I need this in my life. I love it so much. Okay, and the next two that we're going to talk about are the ones that did not work so well for me, um, but are still beautiful perfumes nonetheless. The next one we're going to talk about is Tom Ford Metallique. So, before I got the sample and tested it myself, um, I read a ton of reviews and most people were saying there's nothing metallic about this, it's just basically a vanilla fragrance, um, like a powdery vanilla fragrance that is very weak and there's no longevity, there's no projection to it. Um, but mostly people were just complaining that it's a perfume called Metallique and there's nothing metallic about it. Holy cow. Um, I must have the chemistry that was meant for this perfume because this smells so metallic on me that it smells like sweet blood. I know that sounds disgusting and trust me, it was disgusting. On my skin, it literally made me gag because it was like the smell of sweet, like a sweet blood. Um, I sprayed this on my mom to see if it was gonna react the same on her with her chemistry as it did with mine and Hers, it did it a little bit, but nothing compared to like what mine was like. Why do you smell it on me? It all smells like almost everything smells better on me. Almost. That's true. That's true. 
to smell it. Yeah, it's definitely better on you. Yes, it is. So, I had watched a review because I was going back and forth. Uh, I almost blind bought a full bottle of this and I'm so, so glad I didn't. I watched a review that Smurfy Girly did on her channel and I love her perfume reviews. Um, I trust her reviews probably more than anybody because she is very, um, she's just really knowledgeable about fragrance. She's really, really... Anyways, I watched her review on this perfume and it made me want to sample it, but it definitely stopped me from blind buying a full bottle of this. So I am so, so grateful for that um, because this smells really, really bad on me. Um, it is a, a beautiful perfume though. So this is uh, floral aldehyde. It's, it's described as being a floral aldehydic perfume. So this is aldehydes, bergamot, pink pepper, hawthorn, lily of the valley, heliotrope, ambrette, which is musk mallow, Peru Balsam, Vanilla, and Sandalwood. And you definitely do get a lot of vanilla, especially in the dry down, but because it is so metallic on my skin, that's what it ends up smelling like is sweet, like blood. Um, it's just really, really not good on me. Uh, I think that if you have the experience that I'm reading a lot of other people are having in reviews saying that it just really dries down to a nice, soft, mellow vanilla, I think that you would really like this. I think that if you have skin, chemistry like me and you are getting that really, really sharp metallic note in this, um, I, I don't think that you would like this. Um, some It sounds to me like some people are looking for that metallic note though and they're being disappointed by the fact that they're not finding it. So maybe some people would like that. Um, but I would say that this is definitely not a safe blind buy. If you were thinking about blind buying this, definitely don't. <laughs> definitely track down a sample first because this is a very, this is a $150 bottle of perfume and I would hate for anybody to get it and have the same experience that I had and um, be really disappointed. So anyways, that is Tom Ford Metallique and that was my experience with it. Okay, and the next and last perfume that we have to talk about is the new Valentino Donna. So this is Valentino Donna Born in Roma. Okay, so Valentino Donna Born in Rome is three jasmine flowers and accords blended with vanilla bourbon, um, which apparently vanilla bourbon is like one of the most expensive ingredients in perfumery, which I had no idea. But um, pink pepper and woody accords. Now, I will tell you that this almost smells niche. It is very... Um, it's very different for being a designer perfume, but this has the same kind of base note in it, and I'm not totally sure what it is, but this has the same kind of base note in it that Montel fragrances have in them that does not work on my skin at all, that turns very sharp and almost metallic smelling. Um, yeah, this is, there's something about this that is just not working for me, but I have read a lot of really good reviews for this, so I think that people are really enjoying this perfume, but it's just not working for me. It's described as being a floriental woody fragrance, and the bottle on this is stunning. I absolutely love, I love the Valentino Donna bottles anyways, I think they're so pretty, but the pink with the black contrast, it just, it looks really, really pretty. So, yeah, this one, um, if, uh, it really does smell so good, and it smells wonderful on the card because it's not mixing with my skin chemistry, getting that weird metallic note, and I do think that, um, sprayed on clothing, I could probably make this work, but I like to spray my perfume on my skin because I like the way that um, the warmth and heat of my body makes perfumes change. Um, and you don't get that with it, spraying it on clothing. So I do like to wear my fragrances on, directly on my skin. Oh, and this is really, really beautiful. It's a little bit floral. It's a little bit um, almost detergent-like smelling, but in such a good way. 
really, really beautiful, very feminine, um, just a really nice fragrance. Again, could be worn any time of day, any time of year. Really, really lovely. It's a, I don't, I haven't smelled the original Donna or the Donna Aqua yet or the, the Noir type one. I haven't smelled any of those yet, so I don't really have anything to compare this to. And I couldn't tell you um, kind of the similarities and differences between this and those fragrances. I can just tell you that this is really, really lovely and I really wish it didn't do that weird thing on my skin that like the Montel fragrances do. So if you are somebody that Montel fragrances work for, I think you would really like this. Um, I would say that this is probably a safe blind buy. But so yeah, I think that this could be a safe blind buy for some, but I would definitely recommend picking up a sample of this uh, first as well. But again, this one has pretty good longevity. Definitely good projection. Um, this one lasts between six to eight hours on my skin. Yeah, really nice. And I'll tell you the metallic, I didn't talk about longevity of this one. Um, this one does not have great longevity either. I would say between four and six hours and then it's going to completely disappear from your skin totally. Um, yeah, and then the Valentino Donna is definitely a little bit uh, better as far as projection and longevity go. Um, definitely you could get between six and eight hours with this one and um, probably even more, but so anyways guys, those are the new release perfumes that I have been testing and sampling for the uh, last couple weeks. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was helpful for you. Again, if you uh, like videos like this or if there are perfumes that you would like me to get and test out for you and do reviews on, please definitely let me know in the comments below. I would love to uh, get on that for you. So. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.